paper needs information from the highest source. Ah, the so-called peaking leprosy. I'm afraid you media chaps have sensationalized the whole thing. Yes, but our paper wishes to reassure. Reassure? How will you do that? Clinics throughout the world are working flat out to find a cure. Tell people if they're worried to pop into their family doctor for a chat. And he can... Prescribe ointments. Manganese for the poor ones, Peruvian balsam for those who can afford it. Does that help? Yeah. Counteracts the stench when the wounds open. That's the second stage. And the third stage? Straight morphine. It's a nasty business. Is it very contagious? That depends. The layman will be unfamiliar with the microbe which transmits our disease. It is spreading at an unusual speed. We are fighting an unknown enemy, my friend. Write that in our clinic, we've been working on the virus for three years. Here are some of our scientific publications, my young friend. Quote from them, old chap. It will reassure people that we are fighting the peaking leprosy. Of course, we don't call it that. Leprosy's a skin disease. This is purely internal. Our disease knocks the spots off leprosy. You can assure the public of that much. We are much much bigger than mere pus and scabs. It's, is it more dangerous than leprosy then? Infinitely, and much, much more interesting. All the initial symptoms are reminiscent of leprosy. A little patch of white on the body's surface, cold as marble, quite numb. 
That's why the disease is sometimes called the white virus. We doctors simply call it Morbus Chang'e, uh, the Chang virus to you. After Dr. Chang, who, as you know, first described the disease. Fascinating stuff. I reviewed his research recently, before anyone dreamt the disease would become a pandemic. A what? A pandemic. An illness that spreads uncontrollably and eventually affects the entire world. Some fascinating new disease emerges almost every year in China, but none has hitherto been as interesting as the Chang virus. It's the disease of the moment. Five million deaths! At least three times that number running around not knowing that a tiny spot, no bigger than a lentil, is lurking somewhere on their bodies. And the first case in Europe was diagnosed right here in my clinic. Court counselor, professor, doctor. Morbus Chang'e is highly infectious and affects only persons of 45 to 50 years and upward. That's enormously interesting. You think so? How old are you? I'm 30, sir. I see. If you were any older, you wouldn't find it so interesting. The moment the first symptoms appear, the prognosis is hopeless. Death usually follows in three to five months. If you don't mind, Professor, our readers are chiefly interested in how to avoid the disease. Avoid it? It's unavoidable! It'll get us all, my friend. Everyone over 50. What do you care? You're only 30, while we, in our prime, Ten times a day I examine myself in the mirror, and your readers want to know how to avoid disintegrating alive? I bet they would. So would I. Here, see anything? Anything on my face yet? No? Maybe you could conclude with a few encouraging words? Yes, write in your newspaper that we must resign ourselves to the inevitable. Yes? I'm not available. Dr. Dr. Galen? Any references? What does he want? In the interest of science, if you please. Let him bother my second assistant with that. I see. Five times already? Just a couple of minutes then. See, my friend, how hard it is to concentrate on scientific work? It's been a great honor, sir. Science and the people must serve each other. Enter. You wish to see me, colleague? Pardon the disturbance, Professor. I am Dr. Galen. I know that. How may I help you? As you know, Professor, this disease is rioting through the slums of our city. I run a medical aid clinic, sir. I have the chance to see hundreds of cases in the poor suburbs. When you see the horror of it, people rotting alive in front of their families, the poverty, the stench... Then you must prescribe remedies to alleviate the smell. Yes, but I want to save their lives, not just stand there in despair. It's monstrous, Professor. I must do something. I've read all the literature on the subject, and with all due respect, it says nothing. About a cure, I mean. And you think you've found a cure? Yes, I think I have, sir. Come, doctor. Not very fair in your clients, is it? Using them as guinea pigs for your experiments? I have nothing more to say on the subject. But, Professor, I have found a cure for the white virus! You're at least the twelfth person who's come to tell me that, young man. But I've already used my vaccine clinically on several hundred cases, with definite results. What percentage cured? About 60, a further 20 not yet established. If you'd said 100%, I'd have thrown you out as a madman or a fraud. Please, Professor, let me try my vaccine in your clinic. My clinic? That's terribly naive of you, dear chap. Where are you from again? Uh, from Pergamon? I'm Greek. I'm afraid I couldn't possibly allow a foreigner into our Lilienthal State Medical Institute. I'm a citizen of this country, sir. I was born here. Origins are origins, dear sir. What about Lilienthal's origins? I might remind you, young man, that court counselor Professor Lilienthal was my father-in-law. And I've my doubts whether even the great Lilienthal would agree to some medical aid doctor working in his institute. He would agree, Professor. I was his assistant. His 
My dear sir, why didn't you say so? Strange. I don't recall him mentioning your name. Ugh, baby face, he called me. My god, so you're baby face! My best pupil, he used to say. Never mind that. I'd like you to let me run some tests here on some cases you consider hopeless. They're all hopeless, old chap. Look, since it's you, my father-in-law's favorite pupil, I'll tell you what. You give us the formula for your vaccine, and we'll consider it. Then conduct clinical tests. Sorry, Professor, but I can't disclose my formula. Not even to me? Not even to you, Professor. In that case, forget it. Sorry, Galen, it would contravene clinical propriety, as well as, how shall we say, your scientific responsibilities. No one ever writes about the slump patients, but I can vouch for my cure. We've had not a single relapse. See this letter from my colleagues. My goodness, this is astounding. They're just GPs, but damn it, Galen, you have some extraordinary results. Look, old boy, I'm gonna meet you halfway. I'll take your vaccine. Run a few tests. No. I know it would be a tremendous honor, but... You want our clinic to test your cure and give you the monopoly on its application. That your plan, eh? Well, yes, but... That is extraordinarily impertinent of you, Dr. Galen. Approaching the Lilienthal Clinic with such a demand. It is inhuman to suffering humanity, and it violates medical ethics. <sighs> Send in my first assistant to which medicine is sunk. Endless miracle workers trying to squeeze cash from secret cures. And he wants to use our clinic for publicity purposes. You call the sir? Which wards are occupied by Morbus Chengi? Almost all, sir. Two, four, five. And the slum patients? Our non-fee-paying patients are in Ward 13, sir. Kindly inform them that from now on, my colleague, Dr. Galen here, will be in charge of all medical procedures on that ward. Very well, Professor. My dear counselor, I don't know how to thank you. No need, sir. I am acting exclusively in the interest of medical science. Good luck. Nothing so far. here with court counselor Segelius. He's a top specialist. He'll prove me right. How, dear? It's been blown out of all proportion. One sneeze, and it's the white plague. My sister says there's a lot of it around in the country, too. Nonsense, mother. It's just scare stories. See? Segelius here says it comes from China. Why should we pay to support these backward countries? Hunger and poverty, plagues and viruses. They're breeding grounds for disease. Make them a colony of Europe, I say. Segelius says here it's infectious. Pack them off to camps so they don't contaminate us. That's what they should do. Simple as that. Soon as someone gets to the white spot, off he goes. Hmm. The poor woman's all on her own up there. I should take her some soup. No way. You and your soft heart, you'll bring it down here. It's a disgrace, letting that witch stay up there to die. You dread coming home to the stench. Uh, hang on. Uh, those journalists shouldn't be allowed to write this rubbish. What does he say? He says we can't escape. We'll have copy by the time we're 50. Show me. Creedon, 
It's ridiculous. I'll never buy from this paper again. They'll hear from me. Where's the justice in striking people down at 50? Um, it's obvious why, Dad, to make room for the young ones. Hear that, Mother? Your parents feed you and sweat blood for you. And now they're in the way. Very nice. Let them pass on to make room. She didn't mean it that way. No, but she said it. All right for you if mom and dad snuff it when they're 50. Don't take it personally, dad. It's just hard for us to get started. There's no jobs. Something has to give so we can live our lives, have families. <laughs> she has a point. So you're on her side. According to you, we should all kick the bucket in our prime. Uh, what's he in a state about? Nothing, dear. He just read an article about this illness. I said something had to give to make room for more people. That's what everyone's saying, Dad. I don't know where we'd be without the plague. Sister couldn't get married. I'd be slogging my guts out for endless exams. High time too, my lad. Degrees are no use now anyways. Maybe things will change when all the old people have gone. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Only joking. are, dear colleagues, Parisi, cher confrère. This is where we are testing the cure for the white virus. I'll soon have my own little private practice treating the Chang virus. Using Galen's method? Galen can take a hike. The nurse on Ward 13 told me he's stuffing his patients with this vaccine that looks like mustard. So I mixed up the usual minerals and vitamins, added some yellow dye, and tried it out on myself. No side effects. God, I hope Galen doesn't publish before I open my practice. Otherwise, everyone will rush to see him instead. He gave his word of honor not to treat our fee-paying patients until clinical tests were finished. I hear he even closed his other practice in the slums. The nurse on Ward 13 says he can't even afford to eat. Just carries a couple of bread rolls in his pocket. My mother found a white spot on the back of her neck. I asked Galen to take a look. Sorry, my friend, he said. Bloody nerve, just like him. Totally unprofessional. It's my mother. She saved every penny so I could finish medical school. Félicitations, mon ami, c'est un miracle. I congratulate you, Professor. Splendid, splendid. Congratulations. A remarkable success. Not my success, Professor. The success of the Lilienthal Clinic. Phenomenal success. Look, I have a patient with the white spot. A real big shot. He's... Only too happy, Professor. Tell him to report to me in person. No charge, of course, dear colleague. My pleasure. Uh, and with my mother, it was we make no exceptions. Help, this is different. Money, connections, I wish to God I had his patience. <laughs> Ah, glad to have caught you. Congratulations, babyface, on our phenomenal success. <laughs> we must still wait, Professor. Of course, babyface. Oh, and before I forget, there will be one private client. 
But I don't treat private patients. I gave you my word. Very true. But on this occasion, I shall release you from your word. I would prefer to keep it, sir. Galen, I might remind you that this is my clinic. I am in charge here, and I make the rules. Sir, if you put your patient on Ward 13, on the floor, then, of course... <gasps> my good man, that is completely out of the question. He would rather die. We can't just dump a man like this in a public ward with those... Ugh. Come, Dr. Babyface, don't trifle with me. I will treat patients only in Ward 13. I gave you my word. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I must go to my patients. You can go to hell, you... you... Thank you! Bloody idiot! If the professor would permit, I couldn't help overhearing. I have made a serum similar in appearance to Galen's. Almost identical, in fact. What's it good for? It can be used in place of Galen's preparation. It's perfectly harmless. And its medical effects? It contains some tonic ingredients, which you yourself prescribe. It will alleviate pain for a while. But the illness will progress. Galen's injections also have no effect in certain cases. Professor... You're right, young man. But Professor Sigilius doesn't do things like that. I know, but the professor won't refuse a valued client. Point taken. You're wasted on scientific research. Wouldn't you be better off in a private practice? Yes, and that's exactly where I intend to be. Come and speak to my colleague. He'll introduce you to our patient. I wish you well. Thank you kindly, court counselor. Congratulations, doctor. I think we've cracked it. Marshall has just stepped out of his car. Let's run through this one more time. All rooms with patients. To be closed from 0900 hours. All staff to assemble downstairs in the hall. <coughs> the, the Minister of Health has arrived. Attention! Ward 12, we have our control group of patients. We're not using our new treatment on them, so we can compare the results achieved. I see. Let me inspect them. Your Excellency, a word of caution. The disease is highly contagious, and the sight is horrendous, and despite our best efforts, the stench is nauseating. We soldiers can take anything. Forward! Horrible, horrible, horrible! It's a bloody nightmare! Open the window! It's a scandal bringing guests here! Jesus! How can the marshal stand it? Gentlemen, I almost fainted. The things I saw in there. Oh, don't talk about it, sir. I'll remember as long as I live. And as a soldier, I've seen a bit. Attention! You gentlemen haven't the stomach for it. Lead on, Sagelius. Now, in Ward 13, you'll find a totally different picture. Here, we are applying our new method. Your Excellency will see for himself. <laughs> I congratulate you, Sagelius. 
Segelius? It's nothing short of a miracle. Dear Excellency, our revered marshal, allow me in the name of our department. Thank you, minister. That will do. Your Excellency, I am lost for words. Such an honor for our scientific work. We at the Lilienthal Clinic are only too aware how small is our merit in comparison with the incalculably more dangerous plague of perversion, the gangrene of degeneracy, and the leprosy of licentiousness. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to pay tribute to the great healer who with surgical precision has saved us all from a national epidemic of anarchy which threatens racial death to our national organism. <laughs> Sterling work, Segelius. It's nothing short of a miracle. I am profoundly grateful to you, uh, Excellency. Ready, attention, forward, march. My God, you doctors actually go in there? He's a great man, our marshal, a hero. He stood it for exactly two minutes. You can go in now, doctor. Quick, where's the press? Didn't go on too long, thank God. The court counsel will be here shortly. This way, please, gentlemen. On Ward 12 here, you can see what the so-called white plague looks like when it's not treated by our method. However, I would strongly recommend you not to. Back! Nightmare! Don't go in! Revolting! They are goners, aren't they? For sure. Here on Ward 13, however, you can see for yourself the results of a few weeks' application of our treatment. No need for concern. Follow me. <laughs> no pads were ready, gentlemen. The court counselor will give us a quick briefing. It's a miracle! Marvelous! Wonderful! Splendid! Gentlemen. If you had seen the compassion and fortitude of our marshal as he bent over the sick and dying, it was an inspiration! What did he say? Afterwards, he was full of praise for the- If the court counselor might allow me to remind him, he said, Sterling works, Segelius. It's nothing short of a miracle. The marshal overestimates my contributions, of course. Now we have a cure for the so-called white virus, gentlemen. You may write that it was the most dreadful disease in the history of the world. No point mincing words here. It was a greater danger than the Black Death. I am proud, dear sirs, that our nation bears the glory for this success, and that it was achieved here in the clinic of my great predecessor and mentor, Professor Lilienthal. <gasps> Come, Galen. Gentlemen, let me introduce you to one of my co-fighters in merit. We medical scientists don't push for personal success. We work for all humanity. Ugh. Don't be shy, little baby face. All of us, even down to the humblest nurse, have fulfilled our duty. I am delighted that on this great day, I can express my humble gratitude for my dedicated colleagues. Could you explain to us the precise nature of your cure, sir? Uh, simply tell the public what you saw. Write, the remedy for the most dreadful disease in the world has now been found. That's all. And if you want to celebrate further this joyous day, write about our glorious leader who went among the lepers, braving fear, disease, and infection. It was superhuman, gentlemen. Now, if you'll excuse me, my patients are waiting. That's it, then? One minute, please. Gentlemen, please tell them that I, Dr. Galen, the doctor of the poor. Tell who? Tell the governments of the world, kings and rulers, that I went to war as a doctor. And as a doctor, I don't want another one. Write that down. What makes you think they'll listen to you? They will. They must. Or they'll all be wiped out. Tell them the cure is mine.
and I won't reveal it until they promise to stop the killings. Nobody else knows my remedy. Ask anyone here. Tell the rulers of the world they'll disintegrate alive. Tell them it'll happen to everybody. You'd let them die like that? You'd let them be slaughtered by landmines and expect us doctors to save them? Each day do we battle with heart disease and cancer, and now they want us to fight another war? I'm not a soldier. I'm a doctor fighting for human life. How do you intend to do that? Simple. When they pull back, they can have my vaccine. Idealism. No state will buy it. No. They let millions die horribly for nothing. What happens when the rulers start falling apart? They'll be terrified. He has a point. But what if no government will agree? That would be terribly sad. I simply could not release my vaccine. What would you do with it? Take it back to the slums. No lack of patience there. I'll prove a million times over the White Plague is curable. And you won't treat the rich? I'm afraid not. The rich have power. If they want peace, they can simply snap their fingers for it. That's a bit tough on the rich. It's tough to be poor. The poor die young. Everyone has the right Gentlemen to live. Gentlemen of the press, kindly leave the clinic. Dr. Galen appears to be having a nervous breakdown. But we would still be interested to hear Gentlemen, about- Gentlemen, behind these doors, a lethal epidemic is raging. I advise you to leave. My assistant will see you to the door. Have you taken leave of your senses, Galen? I will not permit the expression of such views within the walls of my clinic. And on this of all days, I should have you arrested on the spot. All right, I can see you're overworked. Come here now, baby face. What for? Come here and tell me the precise chemical formula and application of your remedy. Then you can have a nice rest. You clearly need one. I have stated my terms. Otherwise... Otherwise what? I beg your pardon, sir, but otherwise I can't reveal my formula. Then you're either a madman or a foul traitor. I order you to remember your duties as a doctor. Nothing else concerns you. As a doctor, it's my duty to stop people from killing each other. We do not serve some abstract humanity. We serve the state. This is a state institute. So why should that stop the state from making peace? Because it cannot and it must not, Dr. Galen. As one of foreign extraction, you can have no conception of our state's mission and destiny. But enough of this. I am asking you for the last time, Galen, as the head of this clinic, tell me your formula. I'm sorry, Professor. I can't. Get out. Never set foot in my clinic again. As you wish, Counselor. I'm sorry. You think I'm not sorry for all the patients who will die? How does this make me look? Solemnly announcing a cure for the leprosy. And suddenly, it's not there anymore. It'll be curds for my career, Dr. Baby Ass. Imagine the disgrace. I'd rather the whole world croak than suffer your pacifist plague. <gasps> You're a doctor. How can you say that? I am not merely a doctor, sir. I also serve my state. Thank God. Kindly leave my clinic.
found a cure for the plague. God be praised. Over 30 chaps in our office have all passed away. All in their 50s. Poor devils. So, you'll never guess. Huh. I was going to surprise you, but since today's such a happy day, this morning, Baron Krug calls me in. Look here, colleague, he says. Our head of accounts has just died, so I'm putting you in charge. In a fortnight's time, you'll be our new head of accounts. <sighs> just think, an extra 12000 a year. <laughs> Where's that bottle I gave you for your birthday? Shouldn't we wait for the children? What for? She's out with her boyfriend. He's got his exams. Crack it open. Hup. If you want. Hmm. A greater danger than the Black Death. People these days won't stand for dying such a stupid death. It's not the Middle Ages anymore. Ha! Huh. Our Marshal. What a hero visiting the lepers. Uh, not drinking with me? Hup. No, I won't drink. Ah, to your health. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little kiss, mother. No, leave me alone, please. Ah. Ah. <laughs> my God, Krug's head of accounts. Millions pouring through my hands every day. Who would have thought when I started at Krugs 30 years ago that I'd end up head of accounts? Five others had their eye on the job. All of them dead now. You could almost say... What? Think about it. Our daughter can marry. Her boyfriend's got a job. Our boy can work in our office when he passes his exams. You can almost say... Huh? Thank your lucky stars for the play. Lord, how can you say that? It's true. It's all people like us. Without it, we'd be nowhere. And now they found a cure for the plague. We're, we're all laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> it says here, this doctor who discovered the vaccine won't let any government have it unless they promise not to make war. What's wrong with that? Uh, don't be stupid, mother. What do we spend millions on weapons for? Peace? Cut down Krug's factories and throw 200,000 out of work? It's criminal to talk peace now. Throw him in jail. But if he has the cure... Uh, that's open to question. If you ask me, he's in the pay of a foreign power. Arrest him! Put a gun to his neck and make him talk. That's what they could do. But if he really has discovered... Put his fingers in the thumb screw and screw it tighter, tighter, tighter! Ha! Till he squeaks. We have the technology to make him talk. If I had to choose between the plague and peace, ha, I'd pick the plague. If you say so, father. Oh, what's up with you today? What's that scarf around your neck? Have you got a cold? No. Take it off then, let me see. <gasps> Merciful Jesus, the white spot. Look at your neck. Ha ha ha, healing nicely. He told me last time I was almost better. Ha ha ha, well almost back to normal. Ha ha ha, at first he didn't want to take me. If you're a baker, you're not really poor, he says. I only treat the poor. But I say to him, doctor, if the baker gets sick, no one will buy a bread roll from him. I'm worse than a beggar. So, in the end, he took me. Ho, 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 
oh, 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 oh. See, Mother, he took him in the end. God, I'm frightened. Yes, my friend. What can I do for you? Doctor, if you would be good enough, my wife here. God, I'm frightened. What is your job? Head of accounts, Krug Corporation. Krug? I'm terribly sorry, sir. I can't. Uh, doctor, take pity on us. We'll be eternally grateful to you. Stop, please. It's terribly hard for me to refuse you, but I only treat the poor. They need me. The rest, they can. I don't care what it costs. Then you can tell your Baron Krug to shut down his production line. With all my heart, Doctor, but there's nothing I personally can do. <laughs> That's what they all say. Krug can stop the war. He has the power. You should persuade him to use it. Impossible! Out of the question! See? What can I do? I'm terribly sorry, but... Doctor, in the name of humanity... Believe me, I do this in the name of humanity. If you stopped working for Baron Krug, refused to take his money, what would I do then? I'd never get a job as head of accounts in another firm. 30 years I've worked for this. You can't expect me to throw it all away. Goodbye, sir. You see? You see? Ah, let's go. Heartless swine, expecting me to throw it all away. Come in, dear Baron. Thank you. Uh, counselor, I thought of making a donation to your leprosy fund. That is typical of you, Baron. We humbly accept, sir. Thank you. Do you want a receipt? No, no, no need. Uh, so, how are you getting on? Morbus Changi, you mean? Roaring ahead nicely, thanks. Luckily, people have their heads too full of the war to worry, to worry about it. Morale is excellent. Wonderful fighting spirit. Uh, fighting the disease, you mean? No, fighting the war. Our nation puts its trust in the Marshal, our heroic army, and you, dear Baron. Still no cure? Nothing so far. We're still working on it. So you've still found no way to stop the spread of the white virus? I have, Baron. Thank God I have. It will be triumphant in stopping its spread. We will be issuing legislation imposing compulsory quarantine orders on all plague victims. This is my work, Baron. It'll be our greatest success to date in the fight against the virus. I'm sure it will be a huge success. Uh, what sort of quarantine have you in mind? Camps, Baron. Each new sufferer helps spread the disease. So all those with the white spot will be sent to camps. I see. And left to die there. Humanely under proper medical supervision. Anyone attempting to escape will be shot. The epidemic must be suppressed by force, Baron. It won't be long before we have every leper in the country behind barbed wire. And no exceptions. We wasted weeks on that stupid Galen business. Uh, My dear Baron, are you unwell? Here, Professor, would you just look? Show me, man, for God's sake! Feel anything? Is it? We can't be sure yet. Just a little white spot. What do you recommend? If we could persuade Galen to take a look at you. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor. Oh, I suppose I can't shake your hand now. No more shaking hands now, Baron. <laughs> you say the quarantine order will come into force in a few days? I must order them to increase our production of barbed wire. What can I do for you, my friend? I have this white spot, doctor. Let me examine you. Not too bad yet. 
the white virus, of course, but what do you do? Unemployed, doctor. Used to be a steel worker. And now? Oh, whatever I can find. I heard the doctor helped the poor, so. Listen, it'll take a fortnight. After that, you could be well again. Six injections. Could you pay for them? Of course. Oh, uh, that's, <laughs> that's to say, it depends how much, of course. It would be very, very expensive, Baron Krug. Oh, that's not my name, Doctor. Don't waste my time, please. We have nothing further to discuss. You're right, Doctor. Let's not waste time. Look, if you agree to treat me, I'll give you, what, a million for your own personal use. <gasps> One million? All right, five. Make it 10. You could do a lot with 10 million. Think of the publicity that that would buy if you have propaganda in mind. Wait, 10 million, you say? 20. For peace? Whatever you want, you could buy the press. It would cost that much to get the press to support peace? Yes, or war, but you need connections. <sighs> My God, it's hard to make connections. You could spend your whole life on it. Why don't you take care of it? You mean run your peace campaign for you? Precisely. You have the connections. In return, I shall cure you. Sorry, doctor. I'm afraid I can't. You can't? Maybe, doctor. But you are a naive one if you think that you can impose world peace all on your own. Not on my own, sir. I have a mighty ally. <laughs> yes, the white plague and fear. Jesus, I know that fear. If you could rule people through fear, you wouldn't need war. Don't you think that most people are afraid? So what will make people listen? I tried money. Usually works, doctor. It's all I have. A generous offer, you might say. 20, 30 million for a single life. You're so afraid of the white virus? Yes. I'm asking you to close down your factories. Can't you do that? No, I can't. What can you offer me then? Only money. I don't want money. Money is pointless. Money is no use to me. You won't take me as your patient? I'm sorry. You must get dressed now, Baron. Oh, that's sir. 65 heavy tanks a day, 700 jets, 120 bombers. Everything is fine on the munitions front. 30% more than ordered by HQ. Congratulations, Krug! Thank you, Excellency. Uh, I'm <laughs> afraid I can't shake your hand, Excellency. Why ever not? Excellency, I am stricken! God, sir! Have you been to Segelius? Yes. And? He sent me to Galen. And? Galen said that he could cure me in a fortnight, provided I agree to one condition. Do it, Krug, I order you. We can't lose you. There's too much at stake. What's the condition? That my factories stop production of war materials. That's out of the question. Impossible. Well, technically, it's not impossible, Excellency. Politically, it is. You must force Galen to change his terms. His only terms are peace. We won't be blackmailed by this nonsense. You say he can cure you in a fortnight. So, stop production of war materials for a fortnight. We can announce it as a last minute attempt to resolve the conflict through negotiation. Galen is no fool. He could prolong the treatment. Oh. Marshall. If you knew the ghastly feeling when fear penetrates your body to your very fingertips. I like you, Krug. <laughs> You're like a brother to me. Make peace, Excellency! Make peace! Save me, Marshal! Save us all! Get up, 
crumb? Yes, yes, your excellency. I'm not satisfied with those figures. You will increase your output of gas, understand? Yes, your excellency. I expect you to fulfill your patriotic duty to the last. Give me your hand. I cannot, Marshal. I am a leper. The moment I feel fear is the moment I cease to be your commander. I order you to give me your hand, Baron Krug. As you command, Marshal. Thank you, Baron. Show Dr. Galen in. Congratulations, Galen. Remarkable work, quite remarkable. Thank you, humbly, Your Excellency. I'm embarking on a project to convert the Hospital of the Holy Spirit into the State Institute for the Fight Against the White Plague. I plan to put you in charge, Galen. I'm afraid I can't, Excellency. I have my patience. Take that as an order, Dr. Galen. In normal circumstances, I would, Excellency. You have refused to treat Baron Krug? Not exactly. It depended on certain conditions. You will now treat Baron Krug without conditions. Understood? I'm sorry, Excellency, but I must insist on my conditions. Doctor, we have ways of forcing people to obey commands. Look here. Obviously, you can arrest me, but... As you wish. No, 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 wait! Don't do it, sir! I have so many patients. If you arrest me, you'll kill them! They wouldn't be my first. Just think it over. What are you, Galen? A madman? Or a hero? <sighs> Definitely not a hero. I was a field doctor in the war, and when I saw so many people dying, so many healthy men... I was in the war, too. The men I saw were fighting for their fatherland. I led them back as conquerors. Now, go and report to Baron Krug. You'd better arrest me, Excellency, for disobeying an order. Place Dr. Galen under arrest. No, 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 wait, don't do it. You mustn't do it. Perhaps he'll leave me one day. How shall I put it to you, stubborn man? I am personally concerned for Baron Krug. He is an exceptionally important figure and my only friend. You don't know how lonely it is to be a dictator. The whole world is afraid of you. That's why they're arming themselves to the teeth. If you offered them peace, how happy they would be. We were discussing Baron Krug, Doctor. Quite so. You can save him as well as all the others. The Baron cannot accept your conditions. But you can, sir. You can do anything you want. I cannot. Must I explain it to you like a baby? Do you really think war and peace Depend on me, I must obey the interests of my nation. Now, thank God, my people can fulfill their historic mission. I'm just the agent of their will. Which you've whipped up. I've awakened their will to live. You believe peace is better than war? I believe a victorious war is better than a shameful peace. I can't deprive my nation of victory. Only war makes a nation out of people and turns men into heroes. And corpses. I don't know why I haven't arrested you yet. You will cure Baron Crow. Our fatherland needs him. Let the Baron visit me, Marshal. And accept your ridiculous conditions? Yes, Excellency, and accept my ridiculous conditions. In that case! Speaking. He. When did this happen? Thank you. You may go. Fortunately for you, five minutes ago, Baron Krug shot himself. Generals gather. 
gathered in their masses, just like witches at black masses. Evil minds that plot destruction, sorcerer of death's construction. In the fields of bodies burning, as the war machine keeps turning. Hatred to mankind, poisoning their brainwashed minds. Politicians hide themselves away. They only started the Demonstrations are spreading. I know. World opinion is fiercely opposed to war. It comes down to their terror of the plague. They're not interested in politics. They want to live. I'm getting reports that even our people are losing faith. Becoming almost anti-war. Health not medals, they say. Cowards! Only once in every century does such a moment occur. I rely on you to suppress these sentiments. Fear and anxiety is spreading. It's imperative to soothe public opinion. How? Force this scaling chap to reveal his formula. Won't work. I know, Galen. Then uh, we'll have to give in to his demands. Temporarily. And lose our military advantage? Forget it. The only option then is to make a lightning strike before the peace movement gets going. All we need is a minor political assassination. Mm -hmm. A word to the press, mass roundups, organized war rallies, and hey presto, go for it. I can vouch for people's patriotic fervor. My dear minister, I knew I could rely on you. I shall finally lead my people to greatness. when our silver-winged bombers sow death over the lands of our enemy. I want to share with my people the reason for this difficult step. I initiated hostilities without humiliating negotiations with a wretched little enemy which thought it could insult our mighty nation unpunished. Infiltrating their hired agents to destabilize our national order and security! Yeah. Quiet! Shouting won't rid us of this evil. Only one thing will do that. Send in putative detachments. Let the other powers show their cards. We fear nobody! Exterminate them! I knew you'd be behind me. It's for your honor. I'm sending our magnificent army into battle. I swear before the world, we didn't want this war, but we shall be victorious. By God's will, 
We shall win! Our cause is just!
changes everything. Uh, mobilize our youth reserves. Very well, sir. And uh, directives to the Air Force. Very well, sir. And uh, no. Oh, no. That, that won't work. Sweet Jesus. Uh, merciful God. I await your command, sir. Yes. I am in command. From tomorrow, Annette, I shall assume supreme power over my army and direct all offensive operations. This is my sacred mission. Mounted on my white horse, I shall lead my men in the victory parade through the ruins of enemy capital. Oh, the flesh will have fallen off of me. Only my eyes shall remain. I shall lead my men, a skeleton on a white horse, and the people will cheer. Long live our marshal! Long live his excellency, death! You mustn't talk like that, sir. Uh, at the clinic, this old chap stood up to salute me, and a huge lump of flesh just fell off him. Christ, Jesus, is there no mercy? Galen, Krupp Jr. here. Come to the marshal, doctor. Yes, very sick. Only you. Yes, any conditions. Peace treaty. Yes, I'll tell him. No! No! I don't want peace. Have you gone mad? I have a war to win. I can't call it off now. The humiliation. Justice is on our side. No, it isn't, Marshal. I know that, young man. But we shall be victorious. I don't matter. Our nation does. Put the phone down. I want to die for my nation. Doctor? No, his daughter. Yes, he accepts your terms. No, but he has no choice. You'll save him? I'll tell him. Father, he wants a word with you. Hang up, Annette. I can't. The matter is closed. I beg your pardon, Your Excellency. You have no choice. What? Declare peace? Recall our troops? Is that what you want? Yes, sir. Apologize? Accept punishment? Yes, sir. Horribly and senselessly to humiliate my nation? Yes, sir. Resign my post in disgrace? Yes, sir. He's a nice boy, Annette, but he thinks too much. He'll never achieve anything. Here, Daddy. Please, I'm begging you. For all the sick people, I implore you. For all the sick people? <laughs> You're right, Annette. Maybe my place is with them now. With the millions of lepers and plague victims all over the world. Out of the way! Here stands the Marshal of Lepers, heading his army of sick, Stinking flesh! Justice is ours! We demand mercy! Let me, Annette. <coughs> Doctor? Yes, I agree. Thank you. God be praised! I'm so happy! We'll go away somewhere. Then there'll be peace. When the doctor arrives, I'll stop the offensive. Inform all governments. This could have been a great war. My sacred mission. Where's that Dr. Annette? Where is he? 